Hello, Mad Cappers. I'm excited to show you this fabulous hat that's one of the best sellers for our company on our website. We've been making this for a few years now, and you'll notice it has little buttons on the side so that you can hold face mask elastic. So it's very popular with people who want to wear a mask when they're outside, but not necessarily want to take off their hat or somebody who's maybe going through chemotherapy and could use that extra help with immune. Uh, this little flower pin can also decorate this hat. It looks fabulous and that was last week's video. So you don't need very much fleece. We're using polar fleece for this project. And there's also a full uh, sewing pattern that's available and graded on into three sizes, head sizes. So I will talk more about that in the description but you need about a half a meter or 21 inches of fabric. And this is a special uh, interfacing that I got shipped by mistake, but it works perfectly for this hat. And I will put the, the information about it in the description as well. And the brim is available as a PDF. You will find a link for that on our website as well. And I'm just pinning on my brim and you'll notice it has a swoosh that comes up on the side of the face and frames the face beautifully and the brim is very narrow and tight to the hat so that's how it comes down and covers that little extra bit of your head that a regular hat with a brim that stands out more doesn't cover the top you'll recognize we've used this top now in several hat projects and we'll continue to use it and that's available on the website as a free download and the band the instructions for that are here if you want to pause and write that down you can do so. So we're using, we're cutting out two layers for our brim, one layer for our top and two pieces for the band, an outside piece and a lining piece. To start, I'm going to sew my heavyweight woven interfacing and it's a sewing interfacing to one piece of the brim on the wrong side. So that's going to uh, get stay stitched all along the edge, all the way around. And that just makes it really nice and crisp and won't stretch out of shape while I'm putting together the rest of the pattern pieces. So I go all the way around on all four edges with my sewing machine and sew that interfacing to one piece of the brim. And when I'm finished, I'm going to pin the right sides of the brim together. So I'll pin, that, I'll pin that piece now that has the interface sewn to it. And I'm going to pin all the way around up until about two inches or five centimeters from each end of the back seam. And you'll see I'll have a pin there where I'll stop and I'll start my sewing. And I'm just gonna sew along that long swooshy edge. And I'll leave those two points between the white pins open. And I'm using a regular seam width of 3 eighths of an inch. If you take a larger seam than I do, then make sure that you cut this brim piece out a little bit deeper than I have. And on the patterns now, we have a shaded area that represents a half inch seam width or maybe just an in between the head sizes that we have on our pattern pieces. So now I'm gonna sew the back seam of my brim and I'll start by putting the right sides together of the piece that has the interfacing. And once again, I'm going to sew uh, my regular seam width of 3 8 of an inch and I'll sew those two pieces together. What I won't do this time though, is I'm not going to top stitch. And if you are following this channel, you know that I like to top stitch those seams flat. You can do that by all means, but in this case, I'm going to stitch flat the seam when I sew it together to the rest of the hat body. And also I'm going to sew that seam flat and open when I finish that outside edge. So I'm just sewing the right sides of the interfacing and now I'm going to sew the right sides of the piece that doesn't have the interfacing. And I'll put them together now. And this is the back seam of our hat, folks. So we'll sew those two uh, end seams down. 
as we finish closing out the uh, closing up the back of the brim and you'll notice too that this brim sits very close to the head especially at the back and I think this is probably one of the things that a lot of people like the most about it because it just covers that little extra bit of your head that a traditional hat doesn't. So I am going to finish my edge with a serge, but if you don't have a serge, just clip the corners before you turn this right side out. But as I'm showing with my pointing finger, I'm going to serge that edge and voila, there it is. And I just find um, that the serge makes it so much easier to roll that seam right to the very edge. It gives me something to um, hold on to when I'm trying to tidy up that seam. It's really easy to roll it nice and flat and nice and even so that there's the same amount of fabric on either side and it makes a really nice and tidy top stitch. So if you think that you might use something like this hat or any hat that has a brim or a visor or an important seam like this um, as part of your business plan then I would suggest that you think about investing in a serger if only just for finishing these inside edges that are so important that they look nice and smooth and professional and I always pride myself that doing it this way my seams tend to look pretty darn good if I must say so myself. <laughs> so now I'm going to finish that off with a top stitch and you can uh, make the top stitch as, as deep as you'd like. Mine is about a half an inch or maybe just a little bit more. I sort of change it every time I do a brim just by where that I can feel with my finger that inside serge seam is lying. I don't really want to sew right on top of it, but I want to sew close to it. And I'm just going to go around and do a nice, neat job. And I have my beautiful magnetic seam guide helping me do that. And that's another recommendation for your sewing business is to get one of those too. So now I'm just going to close up that open edge on the inside of my brim. And I'm going to go around and sew very close to the edge about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch. And after we close it up, we'll start to prepare our two pieces that make up our band. And the brim looks pretty good. On to the next step. So the band is done uh, in one long piece for the outside and one long piece for the lining. And they're both exactly the same. So we're going to sew up that back seam. And in this case, once we've sewn a seam, and I'm going to take, again, the 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter wide seam, right sides together, and you'll notice there's a bit of a curve at the top of the band, and that is just to add a bit more curve to the top of the hat. So uh, because this is a deep fitting hat, I find it sits better on the head with this bit of curve at the top of that back seam. So I will top stitch uh, both sides of the back seam on the band pieces. Nice flat seams help make a comfortable hat, especially where it rests against your head. And when I'm finished, I'm gonna cut a notch on the center point of both pieces at the top and the bottom and I will also notch the center point of my brim as well. Just folding in half and finding just a nice little tiny notch. So what you want to do next after you finish your top stitching of course is you're going to take one of the band pieces and you're going to sew close to the edge all along that bottom. And when I say bottom, I mean the piece that's going to be sewn to the brim. And I guess we call that a stay stitch. 
So we're gonna help the band from stretching out of shape when we sew it to the brim. And I'm matching the back seam of the outside band piece now with the back seam of the outside of the brim back. And I'll pin those two together there at that point, right sides together. And then I'm going to go around and I'm gonna find those two center notches and I will pin at that point too. And then I'll just go around the hat and just work in the rest of the uh, edges of those two pieces evenly all the way around and I can pin or clip. And I'm using a seam width of my usual width, which is 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And I sew them together. And now I will sew the lining piece the same way. And I like to work with the lining piece on the bottom, right on top of my, um, my feed dog, my, my presser plate, so that I'm working on, on the top seam that, I, that I've already made and I can see and I just sort of follow that along even though I'll use my magnet guide as well. So I'm just pinning them together the same way as I did the first band piece. And now I'm going to sew through all those layers and sew them all together. So just working around the hat now, I'm pulling those two band pieces up and, and just sort of rolling them again with my fingers so that their seams are matching and they're in the, this, the right position because I'm going to sew all around the top and, and sew those two raw edges together. Another stay stitch, I guess, if, if you will, just to help prevent it from stretching out of shape while I work the top into the design and sew all those pieces together. So a quick stay stitch, remove my pins, check my work, it looks good. And you'll notice I've put my company label on the back of the hat. And so that is the outside of my hat. And we have a dart on our top piece and that gives our top a bit of a curved shape, a, a little bit like a, a shallow bowl. Uh, so it sort of hugs the contours of the top of our head. And I'm gonna sew that seam that I just made flat by top stitching on either side of the dart. So I go up, pivot, come back down on the other side and capture both those raw edges underneath in that nice, neat and tidy top stitch. And now the fun part, I'm gonna match the back seam of the hat with the edge of the dart and the notches together. And I just work that top in all the way around, clip and pin, and the pieces should fit. If they don't, then now is the time to maybe cut a bigger or smaller top, depending on where you need or how you don't need extra fabric. And I'm using my usual seam width. And I'm going around the top of the hat. Carefully sewing and working in those pieces so they fit beautifully. And now for the finishing touch, as far as the hat goes, we're going to top stitch right alongside on the top of the band, right next to the, the joining seam for the top of the band and the top of the hat. And we're going to do a nice, neat top stitch and pull those two sections of fleece away from each other as we go along and you'll see that that seam sticking up is sort of helping your presser foot and using that as a guide. Now you can finish the inside there by just trimming away that extra fabric. Fleece does not fray so you can do that or finish it with a serge like I have. Ta-da! And there you go. I always like to finish those raw edges with a serge. And now for a quick trying on the old hat block. And look at that. It fits perfect. Or perfectly. 
I can hear my hubby correcting me. Now you'll see too this distinctive brim. It really needs to have a pin or something holding it up at the front. You can use a pin from your collection or we can make one ourselves. So we have two choices. That's one way. That's our winter hat style fleece flower pin video that's on our channel. You just need some circles of fleece to make the beautiful petals on this flower. And the pin pieces that we're gonna talk about next. But that makes a beautiful flower and I've started to sell the hat with this type of flower now on our website because I love it so much. I use a little bit of faux fur in the center and a button that I bought at a store or you can do a fabric covered button. But the button that we use on the other sample that we sell on our website, the one that we've been selling for years, again, a store-bought button. It's a coconut shell shaped as a flower. And I just run the piece of fleece through it like a piece of thread. And in this case, on this hat, I usually, do, I usually spray paint these flowers black and let them sit for several days before I actually make the pin so that the paint sets nice. And I'm just gonna thread my red fleece through those two buttonholes and I will glue the fleece on from the back. And I'm gonna use my Sizzix die cutting machine to cut some flower shapes and make a layered flower. Now, I know some of you probably don't have a Sizzix die cutting machine, although many of you might be quilters and you, you do have it. So use your flower dies to make pins for your hats. How about that? Cuts fleece beautifully. Some of these dies that I've been using, I've had for several years. So they're very good. They stay sharp. And that's what the fleece looks like. It looks like a big piece of thread or several pieces of thread, but it matches the hat. And I'm just gonna cut a flower to put in between the big black one and the black uh, button that I painted. And you can cut a square for your pin backing. I've cut a circle. And I'm using the thicker dies, not the thin lights that I know Sizzix has now, but you need the big um, heavy duty dies with the plastic pad that you use your crank to pull through the machine. So I'm going to put this red this red flower in between the black button and the black flower that's a little bit bigger for the back. Bit of hot glue. Just be careful not to burn yourself. And we'll let those layers sit and dry for a few minutes before we do the back. And another way you can make a flower is to use this waxed freezer paper. And some of you that are quilters might already have some. And you could trace a flower, an outline of a flower onto your freezer paper and then just use your iron to put the paper on the wrong side of your fleece on the, the using the wax side of the paper and just cut out around the outline of your of your uh, flower that way so now i'm going to make my backing and i'm just going to use a safety pin it's just a regular just slightly over an inch long or or it's just i think it's 28 millimeters long just like the pin in our video and I'm just clasping that sharp pointy end that goes into the clasp and putting the felt in between my fingers or my thumb and the back, the other side of the pin. Use a nice long line of hot glue and then just let it set it on to your backing piece, whether it's a circle or a square. And again, let it sit for a few minutes to dry and then you can put it onto the flower. And once you do that, let it again dry before you actually put it on the hat. It'd be a real shame to get hot glue on such a beautiful hat after all that work. Now I will make a template of my flowers that we will add to the website at some point and I will put the link 
in the description when that is done. It's just being digitized now so that you can uh, plant out the flower and cut your own flowers from our little template. And there you have it. There is the hat with the circle flower that is already up on the channel. And if you wanted to add buttons, you could just buy a couple of buttons or take some buttons off an old piece of clothing. But they're both beautiful, aren't they? I love them both. And here's another hat I made for a customer today. And again, another one in purple. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it and please consider subscribing to our channel. We've got lots more great projects coming up. So thank you so much for watching. That's me. I'm saying goodbye and we will see you soon. Happy sewing, everyone.